what's going on in this presentation i am going to tell you how to make a lot of money selling books and courses online and how i'm going to do that is to show you what i did and tell you not what not to do so with that let's begin a little background my name is glendon cameron in 2009 i wrote a book making money a to z with self storage unit auctions and the book did really really well which prompted me to create a course which did really really well problem is i did the course off of my website and as you start to scale up you start running into problems because typically if you have someone that has a plug-in or something on their wordpress and they can make money. Don't get me wrong. They can make money. But the thing is, when you start getting a lot of traffic and you start getting a lot of students, things happen. So that prompted me to look for solutions. And one of the solutions that I looked into was Udemy. Now, this is not a Udemy recommendation and this is not a Udemy bash session. I'm just going to give you my experiences. I signed up for the platform and I immediately had problems. Now understand, I was creating courses my own way. Udemy wants you to create courses that are very standard and formatted. So when one of their clients, and be really, really clear about this, when one of their clients comes to the site and goes from course to course, there's a similar feel. So it makes sense. I totally get that. It was frustrating to me, but I went ahead and did it. And you can't have your courses as long as you want them. And the new thing. Now, this did not happen when I was there. But Udemy changed it where you could not have pricing above a certain point. And I was like, wow. Now, this happened after I stopped posting stuff there. Uh, I left the site because I got frustrated. And what you see is what's, what's here. What I mean, because the thing is, I can't take it down. <laughs> I can't take it down and it's still here. Uh, I know one course was like 300 bucks that was selling. Then they, they killed the price, but just it's pretty interesting. Um, now this is, they, they will make thumbnails and stuff for you. So that does work. Like I said, you know, this isn't a Udemy bash session or anything like that. It's just to tell you, my experiences and it's really really issue laden for me my personal preference because of the discounting and stuff and with that said there's people who've made tons and tons of money utilizing udemy and um i wasn't one of them i matter of fact no i don't even remember the password it's been so long since i've been in here i don't even remember Nope, <laughs> I can't, I'm not even going to try that. I don't even remember it. And there's that. I think I created that. Like I said, people were taking the courses. They enjoyed the courses. Uh, here was the Udemy course, not the Udemy course, the Uber course, and all this other stuff, right? So I stopped doing that, and then I went here. Now, um, think if... Thinkific.com is not paying me to say this. This, hands down, has been the best solution that I have found. That I have not tried everything. I looked at Teachable. I looked at all these other things. But in terms of flexibility, if you don't have a big course, if you're not going to add a lot of stuff, or you're not going to have a lot of videos, okay, there's other solutions out there. But if you have a robust course, you want to do some stuff, this is your thing. I have maybe 120 hours of content across on this site and it just loads really really quickly now one of the things with making money selling your books and courses online you hear many people and they have what i call part of the solution as we go forward your online courses are going to have to be indistinguishable from a college class that's where we're heading the sooner that you embrace that and start working on that the better off we're going to be. I mean, that's where we're heading. And it's many people have the framework. They have curriculum courses, how to put the stuff together, which is nice. But 
from what from where I stand as someone who's done this since 2010 the be, the most important thing that you need to focus on is your audience and traffic how are you going to get traffic to wherever you want now let's go back to you to me cuz one of the reasons I went there was I thought that I would get traffic from you to me and the sales that I made, I probably made 20 sales from Udemy's course, uh, Udemy's audience. But the majority of the sales that I made, I sent the traffic there. And see, that's where things became problematic because of the way that they track stuff. So it's essentially, and this has happened, you can Google it. This is just me, that you could find someone, point them to your course on Udemy. You actually find that lead. And if that person had visited the Udemy site before you found them, you wouldn't get full credit and Udemy would get like half your money. Yeah. I mean, Google it. I don't know if, they, like I said, it's been a while since I've been there. That's why I'm being, you know, straight up with you. But I was like, whoa. And I left for reasons that weren't part of that. Because, like I said, I left because of the flexibility, the inflexibility. I left because I wasn't getting students from the pool it just wasn't working out for me like i said there's other people who made a lot of money has worked out very well for them then when i switched and did my own thing i saw my income it didn't quadruple it was like 20 times yeah from what i was doing because i was also here and i'm bringing this up last because you know once again i like gumroad i still have a lot of books and stuff there i'm not moving them anywhere it's just the site doesn't load as fast as I would like. Uh, there's issues with the catalog because I have so many things, right? So I just left it alone. I mean, the stuff is still there. There's books still there. But when you create courses online and you have to direct traffic, you have to be careful of where you're directing your traffic. And this is something that I have learned. Uh, when I focus and direct traffic to like one spot, it works out amazingly well. But when, you know, let's say I was saying, oh, I've got stuff over here. Go to Udemy. Uh, go here. Uh, go here. Oh, yeah. I've got some books on Amazon. I'll talk about that later. Go here. Oh, yeah. Go here. And it just um, it gets to be really, really crazy. But, you know, that's the thing, because if you want to make a lot of money selling online courses and books, your first thing is who's going to buy it. That's the first thing that you need to think about, because you have people who have experience and they're really good doing this task or they have experience in this career field. But there's not enough people online to generate income. And that's just reality. And you know, I will tell you that because you know, people come to me and it's like, well, I want to do this and I want to do it online. Well, have you gone ahead and did your research to see if there was enough people online that would pay you for your services? That I mean, so many people go ahead and start writing a book. They start creating a course. They, they get their Facebook page together. They, they start tweeting. They start doing all this. And they have no clue to if there's enough people in that bucket of potential buyers to support their project. They have none. And this is kills many people, whether you're doing a YouTube channel, whether you're blogging, vlogging, anything. It's all about are there enough people who are interested in what I am doing that this will make some money. Now, I'm going to show you something that's kind of funny. It's a uh, it's a uh, it was good and it was bad. And it's uh <laughs> it's the strangest thing. It, it it is really amazing how it happened because we we'll go here. I had a video that tracked very well and I've made a lot of money off of it, but the bigger issue is I didn't set it up correctly because I just go ahead and give you an overview of how to start a business with no money. Now, the problem is 
there was two groups of people who came to this video. There was one group of folks who were trying to be efficient. It's like, how can I start a business? How can I do the lean startup? How can I do the boot, you know, the bootstrap startup, something like that. They had money, but they were looking to be more efficient with their resources. Now that was maybe 5%, 10% of people. Now the other 90%, <laughs> the other 90% had no damn money whatsoever. So I created a video that's doing very well in terms of getting views, driving traffic, but it's a drawing a audience base that just doesn't have the money to start a business. And they're looking for this video because they have to have a source like this of starting a business with no money. You'll see, this is the thing. Just because you start a business with no physical cash doesn't mean it's not going to be expensive. Your time is the most important resource you have. Each day of your life that you live, you don't get that day back. There is no going backwards. You just go forward until you die. So if you waste, you know, three months, nine months, two years on this thing, trying to start it up with absolutely no money. I mean, you could have went out and got a part time job, got the money to start the thing and found out in a month if it was going to work or not. Whereas you're sitting there hustling and slaving away for years on something that never was going to work anywhere. And I see that all over the place. Uh, it's just it's bad. It's really, really bad. But when you're creating your book, when you're creating your course, you have to understand, is there an audience that's going to make you any money? Now, to that 5%, 10% that came here from efficiency, those are the people that bought my courses and I made a lot of money. So if it wasn't for that group of people, this video would have, uh, it, it would it does okay on that sense. But, it, I mean, it, from a YouTube standard, it is a success because it, it, it ranked, uh, it gets a lot of traffic every day, it gets people to subscribe. But from a selling standpoint, it creates a problem because most of the people who are coming through this video have no money. Now I was in a group and we were talking about that and you know, they were trying to be really delicate, but this is the thing. If you go to the hospital, right. And you've got a open chest wound, a sucking chest wound, and you need a doctor. And there's this guy in the ER who's like, Hey, I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to pray with you. And you're like, fuck you. Where's a doctor. And even about being nice and not nice. It's like uh, getting what you need. So if you need a doctor, I don't care how nice someone is. If they cannot help you or solve the illness or help you in your time of need, it's like, yeah, I appreciate your sentiments. Now get out of the way so a doctor can come in here. I mean, that's the reality of this. And you've, you have so much of this namby-pamby stuff online that if you say something, people are like, well, you're being mute to the subscriber base. You're, you're hating on people. The reality is if you go to your job and your boss is like really nice, but he doesn't have money to pay you, there's problems. And that's the reality. And, you know, we're, we're going on and on and on. They were trying to dance because I had to stay back and be a more supportive role because sometimes I see shit that's just not going to work out. And, you know, sometimes I'll PM people and I'll say, look, if you're going to do this, this isn't going to work and this isn't why, you know, I won't do it in public. And even with that, they're like, ah, oh, you know, they get all bent out of shape. And I'm like, okay, fine, fine. I won't, I will leave it alone. And then six months later, a year later, that shit crashes. I, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, and I'm telling you this thing. I'm, I'm letting you know this because there are many of you who want to make money online. You, you want to do courses. You want to create stuff. You want to get that passive income. And it's possible. It's very, very possible. It's very possible. But the thing is, you have to understand that you have to put this stuff together the correct way. And you need to learn how to generate traffic. And there's only three ways that you're getting traffic organically, which is build content marketing strategy. So you can get inbound leads. You're going to do pay traffic, which is you're going to pay Google. You're going to pay Facebook, Bing or somebody to get traffic, or you're going to get influencer traffic. Now, some people will go ahead and say joint venture traffic, like where you partner with somebody and you get their email list. To me, that's 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 influencer traffic, referral traffic. They're very much the same to me because that can dry up on your ass real quick. Whereas if you're paying, 
long as you got money, you're in the game. If you build organic traffic, you know, that's that's to me better. And that there's a lot of people who I say shit on organic traffic because it's not fast enough. And this is just me to, you know, uh, 2010. I've seen a lot of people come with the, the fast growth and stuff. And there are folks that I go looking for and I can't find who were like Internet internet marketing superstars that I cannot find. They're not doing stuff. I go find their Facebook page. They got like a job and shit. So from me to you, uh, number one, to do this, it's going to take time. Just be real clear about that. And when I say time, I'm talking about months or years, months or years. Uh, the second thing is if you're going to circumvent that, you're going to need have you're going to need to have money because there is a way to get around the months and years, but you're going to need money and you're going to need guidance because I have seen and there's one guy in my group. He came in. No, he he just had vague business ideal, but he joined this group and he spent a lot to go to the next level. But see, this is the thing. I think he spent either 10 or 15 grand because I'm not in that group, but everybody in that group, he got referrals from that group. Now, let's let's just talk about that. He joined a group that was either 10 or 15 grand. Right. So that immediately tells you that everybody in the group has financial wherewithal. They may may or may not have a business, but they got some reserves. And that's an, and that's an accelerant because if you have no idea of what you want to do, no business concept, no money, you it's just hard. It's just really, really hard. And I think a lot of people don't want to accept that or be told that without getting their feelings hurt because what's going to happen is as we go forward, online education is going to be indistinguishable from college curriculums. It's going to be that tight. It's going to be that good. And it's going to be much, much uh, cheaper and it's going to be more effective. You're going to be able to take an online course and get immediate results and maybe that day up to the year, you know, and that's a big range, but that's reality depending on what you're doing. Like um, my book here, uh, people who bought the book, who went out and bought units and applied the information, saw immediate results. And, you know, back in the day, same thing with the Craigslist. It's just, you got to go ahead and get in the game. Now, I got good reviews and stuff from Udemy. And once again, this is not a bash thing or even a recommendation. It's just, it didn't work for me because of the way that I wanted to run my courses. Now, if you are you have some expertise or you want to put some stuff together and sell it online. Uh, here's a few tips for you. Depending upon who your crowd is, you may want to tighten your game up locally first before you even go online. You may want to just get five or 10 people, sit down with them, do like a round table, train them even for free, free. Even if, they are going to, you know, be involved and they're going to be dedicated and committed to doing what you tell them to do. And then work through those gyrations first before you go online. Now, I know that's contrary to what a lot of people will tell you. It's just go online, fake it till you make it. Um, you can't hide shit online. And once again, this is the thing, because when when people come to you, like, you know, people come to the YouTube channel I can tell when there's like something happened because all of a sudden I get a lot of people looking at my LinkedIn. I get a lot of people friending me on Facebook. I start following. I get a bunch of comments. I'm like, okay, either someone embedded a video, but I get signals that they're checking me out. So you come on YouTube or you come on the internet or Facebook and you have this amazing solution, right? And then when they go to research you, they can't find shit. So go ahead, start locally. And also, you got to put content out. You got to put content out. There is you you got to put content out or you're going to be doing client work, which can make you a lot of money. Because if you're not um, doing what I call a inbound marketing device, YouTube is an inbound marketing device. Uh, a podcast is an inbound marketing device. All of these things 
or will bring traffic to you, you're going to have to pay for traffic or you're going to have to go to these events and start getting to know people and get client work and referrals because that's what a lot of the bigger people you see on YouTube, Facebook, or talking about, you know, the social media people notice that they're always at events. They're always at events. That's how they get money. Very few of them have the enough juice to live solely off of their online inbound marketing income. Like I do. I don't go to events. Uh, I did something the first six months of this year and I kind of tore around with it every now and then, but everything I do, I do from home and I rarely meet any of my clients, but this is, was built for that. And you've got to ask yourself now, if you enjoy client work and doing stuff, then that's great. Go to the conferences, but I'm just letting you know what you're in for. If you're going to start creating online courses and you're going to be trying to make money. That's pretty much the whole deal. And it's it's an amazing opportunity that we have before us right now. And I just want to give you the information so that you approach it from a posture that you'll be more successful versus you just jumping in. Because um, I'm a member of another group and a bunch of people came in and they're taking the they're taking the class and they're all bright eyed and bushy tailed. And I'm just sitting here. It's like they have no clue the amount of work that's ahead of them. Now, I'm not going to be Scrooge or, or the Grinch and be like, you have no I, I'm not saying that I'm actually being very helpful. I'm one of the, you know, the proctors and stuff in the group, but <laughs> they have no clue to what's coming. Whereas, you know, you're here. You, you found me this somehow, some way. Uh, I'm giving you the information that you need so you can be way more successful and build something that you can be proud of, but also it makes money. So if that makes sense, hopefully you enjoyed this presentation. If you like this information, be sure to subscribe, comment and like, and share this with anyone who may need it. Thanks.